Hey guys, it's always exciting to see a new beta being released. Today, 11.3 beta 2 is out and a lot of new features and changes I wanted to cover in this video, including the new battery management feature, which Apple has been talking about for the longest time. You can now take control of your battery on affected devices. Even on devices that aren't, you'll be able to see the info on it. Anyways, so this comes in around a 300 megabyte update for me on my iPhone 10. And before, this is my first change that I noticed. I actually had 49.79 gigabytes available after updating 53.91. So that's four gigabytes that has been returned to me after updating basically, which uh, were the ones that went missing with 11.3 in the first place. So just wanted to say you might get some storage back in a pretty big chunk. And truly the performance of this update has been incredible. I've noticed that it has been so fast and responsive. All of the animations in general just feel great. So iOS 11.3 as a whole has been pretty awesome. And if you guys have been wanting some performance performance boost. This is basically the update that is equivalent to iOS 10.3 that fixes everything wrong with iOS 11 or mostly wrong with it. And it brings back a lot of the performance that you were missing. Now, starting with iOS 11.3 beta 2 on the iPhone 10, if you guys want to perform an update or a restore, you must use iTunes version 12.7.3. Otherwise, certain features may stop working or work incorrectly, such as Face ID. And that's only starting with this new beta. So do keep that in mind. And Apple mentions that this beta will not support the iPod Touch sixth generation, which will come in the future. So right now, if you guys are on that device, you don't see it. That's why. Now on iOS 11.3 beta 2, Smart Invert has gotten smarter. Now Safari content such as images and video are no longer reversed. So you can further enjoy this sort of dark mode on uh, all of your iOS 11 devices. And definitely an improvement, but still Snapchat and many third-party applications are reversed. Although the developers do have control over this and they can implement sort of a smart invert solution. So when that's enabled, their app will accommodate it. And uh, I haven't seen that in many applications, but some do support it. And here are those updated controls for the battery settings. Apple has promised for devices, especially the affected ones. So you'll see a new tab right here in the battery page of settings called battery health beta. Now jumping in here, there's several things you can do. You can check the maximum capacity of your battery life on my iPhone 10, thank goodness, still 100%, but I've seen some of your devices already start falling down to 95% or so. Don't even worry about it. Natural progression or decay of the lithium battery. Also down here, it'll tell you what capability your battery is running in, and theoretically unaffected devices, you will be able to disable and enable throttling using an option over here. Now also there's a learn more little hyperlink over here. So it'll actually tell you everything you need to know about this whole battery situation. Apple has a write up over here that you can read through. And interestingly enough, these features are not available on the iPhone 5S. So you will not be able to control any of this on that device or so I've heard. And there's actually a lot of updates to the app store, which I'll get to in a minute here. But first off in this beta, there is a new splash screen, which is welcoming you to the app store. And then down here, there's a little hyperlink to another page for App Store and privacy settings. So again, that icon, which will be displayed in your status bar, you'll see here via another splash screen. In this version, many third-party applications that did not open or crashed immediately will no longer do so. Case in point, Skype for many people would crash immediately. It's been fixed in 11.3 beta 2 without an update from the actual publisher. And for people with iCloud messages enabled, whenever you go to delete a certain thread, you'll now get this option here warning you that it will be deleted from all iCloud devices. All right, so super tiny one, but one that I did notice all the same. When you're in the N emoji section of iMessages, the record button now sits a little bit lower on 11.3 beta 2, whereas before it was floating up a little bit higher. And iOS 11.3 beta 2 adds a brand new class kit framework for educational apps. This is something that 9to5Mac discovered within the source code. It's not immediately available, but there are a couple new features with class kit that you'll be able to take advantage of with this new beta. For example, students will not be able to leave the certain testing application if you so choose. And apparently there will be new student evaluation features, which users will be able to answer questionnaires that will be automatically transmitted to teachers remotely via via iCloud. So cool, some new student kit features in there. Now within the podcast application, whenever you actually click on a podcast now, it will automatically start playing instead of jumping into the settings and then where you can play from there. So nice little update to podcasts. And there's now support for per device volume selection. So you can actually, within the music player widget, 
select volume on different devices. And this is of course for the multi-room support, but it's interesting to see that it's working on AirPods even. And there are actually many reports from people that use third-party adapters for Bluetooth in their cars, and it's now being recognized as a car sort of. So you can actually uh, remember your location when disconnecting from it and leaving your car, it'll save your location in maps, much like it would with your stock Bluetooth stereo. And many third-party music players had broken support in iOS 11.3, where you'd actually click on a song and it would start at the beginning of the album. Now that's since been fixed in 11.3 beta 2. Now that's everything that's new in this particular beta, but I also did want to cover what I missed in the last one, and there's quite a bit. So first off, in the iBooks application, there is now a new filter for a true black background, whereas before it was sort of a black, but not taking advantage fully of the organic LED display. So now it is completely, truly black in the background. And jumping into Safari, on the bookmarks page, there's a slightly updated folder design over here. So previously, as you can see, it was pretty empty. Now, there are little icons there, much like a folder on your home screen, and you can jump in and do the same thing now, except from the exterior, it looks a little bit better. And discovered by Vincetti's 3 on Safari on a non-HTTPS server, you're gonna get this one typing in a passcode. It'll say website not secure, It'll basically give you this big fat red warning up top in the URL search bar. And another secret feature that 9to5Mac was able to discover within Safari, it's called secure channel, and basically it would allow you to log into websites using your Apple ID. So so pretty nifty there. It's not implemented yet in 11.3, but beneath the surface, it is lurking. And a really useful one within the music application, when playing a song in the Now Playing page, and you actually wanna go back to the artist, it'll ask you, do you wanna go back to the album that this song belongs to, or to the artist? So really cool to get this option here. And a lot happening within the App Store. Now you can actually see the exact date that you downloaded an application within your purchased tab. So way back in the day, you can actually see the exact date. And when downloading a new app, application. Now there's a new visualizer. So as you can see over here, it'll tell you that you need to double press the side button and show you where that is in case you forgot. And when actually looking at the details of an application, if you click on the category that it belongs to over here, you'll actually be taken to the top charts of that category. So a nice little hidden feature in there. And a really great one within the app store, you are now able to sort reviews. So if you jump into the review page over here, you can sort by these categories, most helpful, most favorable, most critical, and most most recent. And in iOS 11.3, you can actually use Face ID now for parental verification of purchases. And in the Game Center settings, you can actually now search through your friends using this new page over here, which I have no friends, so, oh man. And 11.3 is the first firmware that actually fixes the problem behind the bug in earlier versions, where you would add one plus two plus three quickly, and it would give you a completely different result which now it doesn't, but the truth is now the animations are fixed. If you look at the little plus icon, when you click it, there are now subtle animations. That's what was causing the issue in the first place. The animation basically didn't let you input a next character until it finished, but now it's fixed accurately. On 11.2.5, as you notice, there is no animation. It basically just flashes, but it doesn't fade like it does now on 11.3. So cool that they got to the root of the problem and fixed the animation. And iOS 11.3 is the first firmware with actual hard-coded support for stereo syncing of HomePods. This isn't a feature Apple's releasing the HomePods with, but in the final version of 11.3, it's very likely that stereo syncing will be released alongside it. All right, so there it is for iOS 11.3 beta 2 and even more beta 1 features. Let's go ahead and check that performance. Yes, I can see that the stability and general usability is better, feels very quick. Let's see the numbers if they support that claim, but I don't think anything will be different. But this is the first one where we actually have support or control of the battery features, so who knows, it might change. So this is the original 11.3 beta 1, and afterwards, yeah, it is a little bit higher, but can't say that I notice much of a difference. The multi-core is, single core is just a little bit lower, so pretty much the same thing there. Anyways, guys, there it is, chock full of new features, really excited for this firmware, but yes, I am running it on my personal device, uh, aside from my jailbroken one, I have two, and it definitely is very smooth. There were a lot of bugs in the original, but for the performance aspect of it, it's been great. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. That's the latest. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.